Good morning, everyone. So for today, we are going to do our May garden tour. And I cannot believe that May is already almost over. It almost went by with me forgetting to do the garden tour. So we're going to check out our seedling area, which is basically the planter beds now that they're grown. The back flower bed here. And I want to show you guys up front what I did with a wheelbarrow with those super tunias that we got delivered from Proven Winners and also um, show you guys, I guess, the first iteration of our front yard grass because we have had to work on it a bit and I think there's still going to be some progress to go after as well, but I want to show you guys all of that today. So for some perspective, we just walked out of the little patio awning that I have out of our back door. What I want to show you guys first is actually these pumpkin vines that we got growing last year or earlier this year, January time. We had some pumpkins left over from Halloween decorations and what Nando actually decided to do. Let me pan over. Um, we just climbed up on the roof and threw them from up there down below because we wanted to see just a big splash. I'm not sure. <laughs> just to get rid of the pumpkins in a fun way. And we apparently left a few of the seeds and they actually started to germinate. And that is how we got this potato vine. Or this pumpkin vine we tried growing it originally up this trellis but it really wanted to just continue right and sideways so i tied it up to this bench and we'll see how it progresses we have had a few blooms but it doesn't look like any have been sort of pollinated because they do snap off i can see one here look it blooms and then i get this tip that snaps off so i'll keep monitoring it and see if we ever do get one of those pollinated and a pumpkin to grow we, we uh, tossed about three different varieties of pumpkins, I want to say, that I vaguely remember. And this leaf has a different uh, leaf structure. So, excitingly enough, we're about to get two different pumpkin varieties if they are going to germinate um, and actually produce that fruit. There's Aspen sniffing around. So let's walk over to the back fence. I planted up one of the tulip magnolias, uh, it's a Jane magnolia, into the ground. This one was just a container for since January, so I actually wanted to get it into the ground to continue its root development, so it's going to live there along this fence. So we did remove that fruit tree that we had here. I think it was a Japanese plum, I want to say, but it had definitely died from the transfer from upstairs or from our front yard. Aspen's drinking out of the water fountain. So yeah, that fruit tree dried and it would have just taken longer for it to maybe flush back out. So we wanted something pretty now while we're here. We'll just pan over to our backyard here and the bougainvillea is reblooming beautifully. The hostas are succumbing to a little bit of sun damage. So maybe moving them, but I think they're going to be good for now. They won't die, just the leaves and the foliage will look um, burnt like that for them. We have our topiary growing taller and taller. We have our celosia that we planted in uh, winter sowing. So I did cut a few of these white flowery stalks and already put them inside as like a, a flower base. <laughs> so those are really good, really easy, doesn't require any fertilizer from what I've seen so far. and. I've enjoyed that. Our bougainvillea is reblooming. Recently, I cleaned out this uh, bird bath because it was getting a lot of that black sort of green algae at the bottom, just with the leaf foliage dropping and sort of decaying. So now we have a fresh new bird bath. And down below, I actually added the asters from the planter beds that were on the side of our house. I added them along here, sort of as a, a tight border and they're going to get flowering buds like a peach apricot color and multiple so if i can zoom in there will be about six blooms just on the stalk of this aster which i think is really exciting i wanted to clear up space in the planter bed so i chose a spot to put it on put them in the ground back here our other topiary is doing great very little tr um, pruning that we have to do which is which is really great uh, i think here in the more depth of summer when it rains more consistently we'll have to cut it a bit more consistently as well our painted lady hibiscus is blooming those petunias that we grew from seed are doing fantastic also requires um, very little maintenance on my end they just seem to spread grow taller and actually um, become like a ground cover back there but the color is so vibrant you can see potato vine behind i think these are some 
amaryllis. Uh, they were, this is not the best place I would have put them had I known what the leaf structure was going to be. It was really just a bulb that I had saved from last year and I had forgotten what, what the leaf structure would be or what even flower it was. So ideally I would have planted it here where we have that empty space, but they're going to live here. We already saw the blooms. They were like a yellow buttercup color. Didn't last too long, but the foliage will be there for a while. I also planted some Crispedia here. I removed the snapdragons from the center and I'm going to find out what else I can place in that area. We have our camellias. More just leaves now until the early spring of next year, or early, sorry, early year, um, sort of past winter. I think those will start blooming January time again. Next to that, we have all of the hostas that we actually planted by the side of the house where the planter beds are. It was getting a lot of afternoon sun, so I wanted to move them here to prevent any further damage. And I think they're doing really great. The pops of yellow work really nice with the yellow hibiscus and our yellow daylilies that we have blooming in this area. And the hydrangea is one on the right I think is doing better than the one on the left but I'm consistently fertilizing them once a month giving them water and hopefully we'll get to see some blooms here in summer. So now I moved over to the back cut flower area and we'll just walk through the progression of what I have seen from last month to this month. Our lemon was getting a bit too much sun so I moved it from this side or sorry from this side where that green potted dahlia is over to here so it can get a bit more hours of shade but I will fertilize it again after this video it's doing great it hasn't lost any of the large lemons which I'm very excited about our first planter bed is cleared it had blue bachelor button calendula and the asters we'll see that I place them throughout the garden later on but I moved all that and am starting the sunflowers for the summer left a few asters in here because they're blooming fine so I did not want to disrupt them. In the middle here we have some uh, sunflowers that were already growing from our other planter bed and I wanted to give them a good chance of life so I kept them alive and just transferred them here. I did get a red bell pepper from Home Depot so I want to see how well that does. That's the first vegetable I'll be growing in my garden. I left the carnations because they had a ton of buds still and I did not want to lose those so I'm going to let those flower out and then plant another summer flower in its place. We have some echinacea along the left here, our dahlias we saw earlier, the iris behind, the yellow hibiscus are still doing great, and we have our blue salvia, and this morning I actually saw the first gladiolus bloom, and I think these two together look so like 4th of July to me, that blue salvia and that red gladiolus so I'm excited to see what color of gladiolus come with the rest of those stalks. We have our sunflowers, echinacea down below, our love and a mist. These will be the location of my second succession planting of sunflowers but currently enjoying them in the garden. I have seen a few bees uh, buzzing around collecting pollen as well. Oh there's one now. So that'll be there for a little bit longer before I can plant another succession of sunflowers. And next to that is the mammoth sunflowers. So these are very tall already, maybe about four feet, but those are part of a free um, seedling packet from Botanical Interest after purchasing some other seeds. They just threw that along. We have our terracotta potted dahlia doing great. This one we potted together in another video as well, doing great. Oh, and we have our rows here. I added the string just to give it some support and some guide as to where to start growing. My main concern with this one is I did have to cut a lot of the main branches that came with it originally from David Austin Roses. And I'm not sure if these are sort of canes from the original rootstock that it was grafted onto or part of the generous gardener. So I can really only tell once it starts to bloom see I think I see a bud that's either a bud or maybe that's how the leaf structures grow but we'll see what I can get from this flower <laughs> and my goal is to have it arch all the way around and all the way up 
We planted this one together. I just added some begonias and some creeping jenny to this beautiful dahlia just for some interest while that starts to grow. And sadly, here below, I think I have killed this rose. Uh, I think this was Albrighton rose. And I maybe watered it too much, too little, didn't fertilize it enough. I'm not sure, but that sadly is on the kill list for this year. <laughs> So there we are. That is our cut flower area. Very excited to see the progress throughout the year and the summer flowers to begin blooming. And now back here and the entrance to the cut flower area, we have a dahlia, a salvia, and a rosemary. I think that looks really cute, just the three pots, the three white pots together. We moved the, the other drain magnolia that was in between here at this border area into a pot. I'll pan over here. So this one I'll be able to move periodically if I wanted it to live in a new location, but it's there for now just because of the consistent sun that location gets. So that cleared up the center of this. Additionally from the last month garden tour, I added the border around because it was not a well-defined space before. This grass was overgrowing into the space and it just looked more jumbled and not not the prettiest so I added that black plastic border and some mulch so that really defines the space now. We have our purple chast here it's blooming periodically uh, some of the buds have already gone out but I see new ones coming in now so that'll be a nice purple show I think during the whole of summer. I also added the asters in this area too so these pink apricot blooms you see are what's going to come out at the back of the fence and also in here so it goes um, marigolds aster marigolds aster and these marigolds actually self-seeded themselves from what i had planted in january february time so that was really exciting they popped up mainly in this area i just pricked them up and just plopped them in with a bit of spacing all around. So after uh, having that space left, I went ahead and added the asters as well. Some of these petunias. Uh, what I do have here that we'll see later on in summer is dahlias down below. I planted some tubers directly into the ground versus in a planter bed or in pots because I wanted to see how they do in this environment. Um, so that's going to be exciting. And in between that, we have a, I think it's a fuchsia uh, salvia here and here so this fuchsia salvia may be sort of in the way because they also do get large um, I don't want it to take up the space or the sun of these dahlias that are down below so I might have to move that salvia panning up here we had a ton of calendula they were dying out though the blooms were smaller there are more offshoots than the main flower bulb than the main flower stem sorry uh, so we went ahead and removed them tossed them and added the the lupin that i had in the planter bed to this area along with a few of the asters as well but we'll see generally how well they do here again this area is the back of our house so it is covered by the sort of the roof awning cover there so it doesn't get it will not get as much rain consistently as the rest of the open garden so i wanted to monitor and see do loop and do well with a semi-moderate rain our terracotta bowls are doing lovely the blue salvias so and now i want to show you guys the french garden here and the wheelbarrow that we placed it with new plants as well very exciting first time we just had that wheelbarrow in our garden so i wanted to put it to good use we just trimmed up our lingostrum the dusty millers do great in our heat here some salvia texas sage in the middle there and i went ahead and wanted to extend this lingostrum so ligustrum so i added two smaller um, bush plants as well and those will hopefully get tall enough to meet where the rest of the hedge is here by the end of this year but I really like that yellow look another thought I have is putting Boston ivy along the fence so it seems to grow in like a wall 
uh, forming habit that I've seen in other people's gardens. So I think that was a nice inspiration of having a green fence versus just a wood fence. And then we have our Japanese blueberry trees. Down below is the yellow daylilies, none blooming at the moment. And we have our red drift uh, reblooming roses coming in. Alrighty, so here is the grass progression. I can show you guys a clip of what it looked like before. We had to hand remove all of the weeds, um, sift through some garden soil that was delivered with a lot of mulch. Um, if you can see back there below the tree and under the ligustrum back there, all of that mulch came from the delivery. So we had to sift it with one of those peat moss sifters. It took a lot of time. <laughs> then we added um, Bermuda grass seeds, put in a sprinkler heads and put them on timer. So I think it's a good progression so far. There's a few patches that need to be reseeded and hopefully will come in thick by the end of the summer. And here is where we put our all of our petunias from Proven Winners. I do fertilize them every Friday and I added some uh, what are they dwarf sunflowers here below and look at that you can see the the sunflower heads forming. So this variety is from Eden Brothers. I grew them from seed and they're supposed to have multiple heads not just a single sunflower stalk so I'm excited to see that yellow against these petunias. Yellow is more like a spring or a more of a summer vibe to me. And I think these pinks and light pinks are going to lighten up during the summer. Here is that wheelbarrow. We have the white spire salvia, one of these hummingbird um, plants in the middle, some begonias, pink angel begonias here, and a very tucked in watermelon. Oh, I forget the name that orange and green plant in the middle there, I forget the name. And then we have some euphorbia. So all those together are really great in the sun. They get some water with the yard sprinklers going off, but I do try to fertilize them every Friday. And I think this will just get bigger and bigger as the weeks progress. And hopefully the grass will come in as well. <laughs> an update here on our front area since we did plant these together. This euphorbia is pretty much loving its life here. Very large. It's covering up most of the dusty miller. Some of the blew my mind of all the list that's underneath. But for the most part, I'm, I have to see if those need to get cut back or anything. Uh, and we'll see later on in the summer season how it progresses. If the sun gets too hot for it or something. We have the moon raspberry caladiums. I did try to, or I did, uh, move some of the corms down here and I'm starting to see some new leaves forming. So all of this area here where you see mulch at the moment will hopefully be those raspberry moon caladiums. These blew my mind of ovulus bloom early morning. We're sort of midday at the moment so I think that's why not too many blooms are out. We have some of this purple verbena alpan you'll see behind me you'll see about let's see one two three four those four um, fence panels i wanted to grow or actually just install some large trees that are making that would make like a sort of privacy hedge so it'd be more greenery wall so i'm debating that or just some tall sort of italian cypress looks of trees there and clearing the bottom adding a nice line of mulch so it's not just you know more more grass so i am trying to extend the garden a bit that way too we'll see how far i get with that though and that's it for today's video thank you all for joining i really appreciate you joining here on my first garden and we'll see you in the next one here is a small little cut vase that i did here recently look at these moon caladiums with these carnations the color and the balance is so pretty something unexpected and i'm excited to see what else i can pick during the summer as a center bouquet